Hello everyone, this is PNG Tonight. I'm John Eggins. Today's stories, at least four teachers' colleges, three of them run by churches, say they are stressed to the limit meeting teacher demands. Mainstream, the Anglican Church, calls on others to unite and assist the government better administer the country. And at least three government instrumentalities look into internet filtering stopping related criminal activities. It's been a popular policy across the country, but as with everything popular, there is the downside with the tuition fee free policy of the government. Now into its fifth year, this policy has several teachers' colleges stretched to meet teacher demands. These colleges are mainly run by the churches. Kevin Deonga reports. From Enga Teachers' College to Holy Trinity in Mount Hagen, Melanesian Nazarene in Jiwaka to Gaulim Teachers' College, the issue of infrastructure is common among them. This is Enga Teachers College located near Wabeg Town in the Enga province, a recently established institution that is yet to have boarding facilities. All their students attending the college are the students. Partnering in development is the way forward for Papua New Guinea. The government alone cannot and we need, we need partners from outside and the European Union has, is one of them, has done a wonderful job in the country through HRDP1. At the moment, there are 11 registered teacher training colleges in the country, recognized by the government to carry out training for primary school teachers. <laughs> Melanesian Nazarene Teachers College is another newly established church-run institution in the Jiwaka province. And that is being emphasized Over the last two years, we were training students for um, two years two-year program and uh, as of um, 2013 it's changed to a three-year program so now currently we're in three-year program so my college at this time is going through a three-year program so we have second batch of students who are in second year by next year we will have pioneers graduating from this teachers college it's very important because many um, schools new schools are uh, established in very remote places in Papua New Guinea and there are many students who are hungry for education and need to be educated. So remote college like Marinis and Nazarene Teachers College is known as rural, rural teacher training college, <clears throat> which trains teachers to go out to very remote parts of Papua New Guinea. There are over 100,000 primary school students nationwide, and as explained by the principal of Gaulim Teachers College, they cannot meet the required 5,000 teachers each year. It's still a great need because currently most of the teachers' college cannot supply. The government of the day required us to produce 5,000 teachers every year. We're only capable of producing 2,000 teachers. So we have a shortage of 3,000 per year. And having these buildings for Gaudium Teachers' College, Medan Teachers' College and Balog Teachers' College, and I know Bomana Teachers College, we now boost to rise up to three to 4,000 kina to graduate in a few years' time. And that now stabilizes the demand of shortage of teachers. Principals of these teacher training institutions share the same sentiments. I believe for other, other institutions, those that receive some infrastructure development, but if there's any possibility, then Holy Trinity could be given some uh, assistance in the infrastructure because the institution, this institution is the first in the highlands. It's over 50 years old. We are not even going beyond 200, uh, 300 plus in this college because we want to maintain standards. Uh, previously this college went into uh, some sort of chaos with uh, 
over enrollment, no classrooms, and all these type of things. So just to maintain standards. From the highlands to the islands, this is Gaolim Teachers College, one of the longest seven institutions located in East New Britain province. A church-run institution that has trained countless number of teachers who are now serving all over the country. This year will mark 50 years of existence. Like any other institutions in the country, they have numerous issues affecting them. With the current uh, church partnership agreement with the government, we did not benefit anything yet. Uh, we, we believe that they, according to them, that it's been directed for infrastructure for other, uh, other institutions. Uh, for us, they, we have not got any benefit out of it yet. Principal Segeru Woda says while the free education policy has come at the right time, the demand for teachers is still very high. There is a lack of teachers. And because our capacity in teachers' colleges cannot take more than what we are taking at the moment, we needed extra buildings. And with the European Union giving us the biggest building, approximately 123 spaces, will give us an 123 enrollment extra, which would mean that our output to the needy schools will be gradually satisfied and will be looking forward if the European Union can give us more, we'll go forward to grab as many as we can. Currently, we only grab 166. But if there's going to be more scholarship, we'll go for 200. That will now enable us to supply remote areas enough teachers, and that will solve the problem of shortage of teachers in those areas. It needs a great deal of thinking. Thinking. Okay. So, morally. Through the Human Resource Development Program, the European Union was able to sponsor more than 700 non-school leavers for primary teacher training since 2006. So far, Gaulim has been taking on board European Union-sponsored students since 2010, almost 200 plus. European Union is a community that has uh, given us a lot of boosting to our uh, training in Gaulim Teachers College. Um, European Union had come in on board to our training, basically they focusing on the isolation and remoteness uh, areas where students are brought from those particular areas and they can be trained and then returned to the areas where other graduates of teachers' colleges cannot make it there because of the isolations and remoteness. Kevin Deonga reporting there. Our next report is on the 100 years work of the Anglican Church in Papua New Guinea. That's coming up after the break.